it is great to get them back on the show on Hot Nineties again. Nikki and Shay from Westlife. Good morning, boys. Yeah. Good morning. Woo! Good morning. Good to be back, Kevin. Uh, listen, exciting times. Um, new music, new single, new album, all happening. Uh, Shane, you've got to be so excited about what's coming down the tracks. Yeah, today is a big day. You know, it's um, it's a long time coming, I suppose, this album and an album that nearly didn't happen, um, I suppose, because of uh, everything that happened in the world, Kevin, the last couple of years. Um, you know, live music was definitely not something that we were able to do, unfortunately. Um, and we had a, a, huge, a huge tour planned. Um, and it didn't happen, obviously, uh, because of, of COVID and everything that happened around the world. So it was a, a difficult time, you know, we didn't know what we'd do. And um, we kind of said, look, why don't we just tr start trying new music? Um, and we did, and that's probably about a year ago now, since we started having the initial conversations. And uh, a year later, we have an album in the bag ready to come out. We have a first single release today, uh, Starlight. Um, and it's just, it's, it's, it's a really exciting feeling to be back, you know? Uh, so exciting. Nikki, I mean, obviously we last spoke and we were talking about building up to Wembley and the new music. So I'll come on to that. But look, Starlight, this massive, up-tempo, perfect song, which I think will sound and go down massive when you perform it live. Is that fair to say? Oh, without a yeah. doubt. It's it's a huge chorus. Um, it's everything we wanted to come back with again uh, three years later, pretty much from Hello, My Love. It's like the next step on from that, which... Back when we announced the reunion three years ago, Hello My Love was that killer track we needed to make us kind of current and, and, and out there again. And this is like the next step up, up the ladder, ladder and it's the next, I guess, uh, part of our story. You know, it's a big record. It's a pop record. Uh, it's got a key change, which is probably the height. We, I mean, we're known you know for some I mean? key changes. We might have to get up just for that. this one, yes. is, this one is the highest key change in the history of highest key changes. Yeah. Um, we went for it. We really we're went gonna for it. We're going to have to, we're going to have to really, I don't know how to say this and, and be uh, for radio or, or, or for that could be broadcasted, but we're really going to have to clench and <laughs> dig deep. Maybe even squeeze. Maybe even squeeze. They, uh, they, they a, little bit, a little bit like the way Tyson Fury had to really dig deep to win that fight last week. Um, we're going to have to do that to get this key change right for Strictly on Saturday night and future TVs. <laughs> I mean, it is quite the key change and quite the notes. I mean, Mark is going up there, Shane, and yourself on this. I track. mean, Mark is going to really going to have to clench <laughs> to get up there. Mark, Mark, Mark does his highest note ever in Westlife. Uh, it's higher than Flying the Wings by a good bit. Oh, yeah, by uh, A little ad lib at the end. He sings Your Eyes and it's it's really up above his eyes. It's it's. Uh, it's amazing though, you know, and I, I think it's a very positive, a very happy song. It's like a dog whistle. It's like, it's like when Mariah Mark's... Carey stuff, it's proper Mariah Carey stuff. Did you um, see the dogs in the street when, when it yeah, goes, yeah. it's like, years ago. <laughs> well, look, you did it with Against All Odds, you might as well do it again. I mean, it's you know just, what? that's perfect. <laughs> yeah. Mark's our Mariah, so it's all good. And look, I mean, it's been interesting reading about how you put this album together. I mean, all artists, musicians, when we last spoke about this, forced into a situation where you were separated by distance. You were in each other's homes, on computers, on camera. So probably, Shane, a recording process like no other for you guys. Yeah, it's very like we're doing now, you know, looking at each other on, on laptops and not being in the same room. We weren't in the same room, the four of us together for the whole album at all, uh, which was crazy, um, but very doable, you know, with technology and stuff now and, and uh, laptops. And But it also opened up so many more opportunities for us um, because, we kind of did stuff kind of away from the kind of limelight or away from kind of record companies. And we started writing songs. We started getting together and writing songs and coming up with ideas and bringing them to, you know, different producers around the world that we wouldn't have got to only for Zoom and only for WhatsApp and only for like, honestly, just all being done online. Um, and we got to do that for most of this album process. Um, so we all, we, all kind of, we all kind of went for it. You know, we, we threw ourselves out there because... Worst case, nobody would have heard it. So, you know, um, it was a nice way to do it, kind of with no pressure. Um, and realized then we were very good at it as a band and bringing all these ideas to all these amazing producers. And, you know, we started making these songs. And um, it's really, really kind of exciting to see where it's got to now at the end of it. And it was a very exhilarating kind of process for us as a band. And very enjoyable you know it was a really enjoyable process um and we got some great songs out of it and we're, we're very proud of it but very different like really different to make this oh, really? album 
Okay, now, because obviously I've heard the single, I cannot wait, obviously, Nikki, to hear the album. You know me, I need to hear the album now. We haven't mentioned the title of the album, the release date. Give me the news. So the release date is November 26th, and the title is called Wild Dreams, which is, there's a track on the record called Wild Dreams, and uh, written, uh, co-written by Shane and Mark as well. So, so the story is quite, it's, it, weirdly, it's biographical as well of the album. Like I mentioned earlier, the next step in our, in our journey, in our story, uh, the songwriting as, as, as it wasn't something that like, you know, it wasn't we, planned. Yeah, it but it wasn't happened. something we also, we have to write lads. We have to be that, you know, pop rock, rock band and stay in the studio drinking coffee and smoking cigarettes yeah. till we get the songs. <laughs> it wasn't that, it wasn't, it just happened because of uh, the to. pandemic and we were all in our, in our own houses and stuff. So, but amazingly put us together with people who were equally in the same position around the world in lockdown that could, uh, timelines could meet, you know, we didn't have to fight to LA or New York or London or whatever and vice versa. It just worked, you know, and uh, there's a lot of great uh, great songs on there for uh, many, many different reasons, to be honest. And look, Shane, here's the thing. you There's a lot of special Gs in your life, Gillian, golf, and now guitar comes into your life. You yeah. Know, you're saying that you've started playing, you're learning, you're doing well, you're on the guitar now. It, yeah, and, and it kind of kick-started kind of, uh, I suppose, a bit of confidence for the songwriting too, because um, something that I suppose I always wanted to do, and we started a kind of, I started just at the start of lockdown. And again, away from everything, away from anybody, just started doing it. And a few months later, I was starting to play tunes and starting to be able to play chords. And obviously for songs, you need chords. So then it started just, you know, coming, like writing little ideas here and there. And, and then we brought it to each other as a kind of a, you know, we can do this away from, away from the limelight, away from, let's say, Steve Max studio. We don't have to do it on the spot, on the day in his studio. We can see if it's any good first, or we can come up with little ideas. Um, and yeah, things happened in lockdown that we never would have happened, you know, if it wasn't for a pandemic. Um, because you can try things out, you know, you can just try things in life and, and nobody has to know about it straight away. But it can, it can be a very enjoyable process. And yeah, now it's, we, you know, we're playing guitar, we're writing songs and we're very happy as a band and we've got a great song out today and it's yeah. just all snowballed into this campaign now which is which is great yeah this is radio i have to point out nikki shane are smiling so much which is always good to see knowing how i know how, what this means to you both nikki i've got to ask you though even though separated randomly distance has it actually weirdly brought you all closer together maybe closer than ever before um i think when we're back in the room like we are today like we we, yeah. we we're yeah, talking to each other when you're in the room Say again. Are you talking to each other when you actually? No, no, we are now. But that no, it, it actually looks like green screen though. <laughs> like actually, not, no, but you see, there, see there is a glow around their heads. Yeah. It's like it's like we could change it now, like like you know, like on the late show, James like, Gordon or something, yeah. and he's like in the James Bond set, and then he's back out. <laughs> um, I think this week has been, you know, in any in any band, in anything, communication. You know, you, you get on better when you're when you're together. Um, within the making of this process of the album, you know, we weren't able to to get stuck into each other in a good way, in a bad way, and go, I don't like that, I do like this, you know, that's that's wrong, that's right, and share our opinions, and that's important. And so I think, but that was the same for any business or any job or anything, radio, you know, unit TV, wherever the whole world. Uh, Kevin, you're either gonna sleep or you pause there, but no, I think you're awake now. Oh, am I? Um, <laughs> no, you paused. <laughs> Never, never uh, you guys. Yeah. Now, now, now my, my answer obviously wasn't really, you know, keeping you going. Um, <laughs> no, now that we're back, it's, it's different and it's, and it's better. Um, listen, Shane, the plans for live performances 2022, what can you confirm? Oh, 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 oh. I'd love to tell you, Kevin, but it's, do you know what? We, we have a lot of plans and very exciting plans for the tour next year. Obviously, everybody knows about Wembley Stadium, which two years later is finally hopefully going to happen. Um, and two shows in Cork in Ireland, uh, big stadium shows. So um, we have a lot of kind of tour dates planned around all that. So and a lot of international dates um, as, as the world opens up, uh, we're going to be able to go everywhere in the world, hopefully. And it will be probably our biggest ever tour we've ever done, Kevin. Um, America is in there for the first time as well. Uh, so it's, it's pretty exciting. Um, and in, in the next couple of weeks, everybody will know about these dates as we announce them, but it's uh, an exciting year next year for, for live, definitely, if you're a Westside fan. And as we discussed before, boys, all of you now are dads. There's such a strong family bond with all four of you now. Um, mm -hmm. And there's going to be a massive crash backstage, I'm sure. 
on the tour. Not much of a crash. Not much of a crash. Like it's only one. Layla, Layla's one. Layla, 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 Layla's two. Yeah. She's the longest. Nicole, Shane's daughter's uh, sixteen. Rock and Jay only fifteen. G and my little girl is is uh, eight in a couple of weeks' time, and then Keen has four to nine with his boys. Uh, so it's it's weird. It's like it's like a big family, but you know those families that have like you know one the youngest is like you know ten years or twelve years away Probably from the eldest Irish family. It's, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean it's it, it's fun, and and they're all at different stages of their lives, you know. And I think. What you can't get away from is, is where the world has been the past two years for everybody, kids included, schooling, everything's been very difficult, homeschooling, masks, everything. So a bit of normality like this is, 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 is a great you know, distraction and a great change uh, to see their dad starting to work again and starting to get out there and be on stage or radio or TV or, you know, as I said, Strictly this weekend. And, um, you know, and then the tour being announced, it just feels... Like, I know that, that type of life, by the way, is not normal, but it just feels like concerts are normal and, and people life is, is like to send a move again, you know? Uh, and it, I know we haven't got long, but it's an exciting big time of year. You're releasing an album. We've got an Ed Sheeran album and a Dell album. That, there's a lot happening between now and Christmas. And, of course, I know that surely you still love and relish that slight competition because back in the day, it was always about Westlife's next number one, Westlife's next number one. So does that still mean a lot to you? It does, you know. I think that you know what? It's great to be be being releasing an album twenty two years later, Kevin and Adele is out and and Ed Sheeran's out and Coldplay is coming out. I think and there's so many great artists out there, and we're still we're still in there. We're still in the charts. We're still you know even iTunes today and now in the UK we're number three already, number one in Ireland. It's yes. it's just great to see that the fans are still there in their in their thousands and um, just supporting Westlife, you know, um, you know, charts are, are important because we want to get them as high up as we can, but we also just want to get our music as big as possible, um, and get our people go, your new song is incredible. That's what we want yeah. more than ever. Um, you know, it is hard to compete with obviously people like Adele and stuff like that. So we don't really see it like that. I think Adele is sitting at home right now, listening to Starlight like going, yeah, it's, it's not bad boys. <laughs> I say she loves it. I say she loves it. And, um, but you know what it is, it's, it's great to see Adele out. It's great to see Ed Sheeran out and all these great songs. Um, but you know, and it's great to be part of that as, as West, like 22 years on, we're still there. We're still, we're still current. We're still, uh, we're still got that fan base. That's incredible. You know? Uh, so much love for you from all the fans, by the way. They message me every morning when I play Swear It Again, when I play Flying Without Wings, if I let you go and feel again. Obviously, they still sound incredible, those songs. They better be in the live set next year, by the way. All of them will be, yeah. We, you'll probably hear every single one of those big songs, Kevin. You know us, we like, uh, we like as Louis says, you got to sing the hits. You have to play the hits. <laughs> you better do that. Uh, listen, Nikki and Shane, I better let you go. Thank you as ever for being on the show on Hot 90s. Can't wait for the album now. I need to hear. I need to sneak copy. Thank you. Send my love to Kian and to Mark as well. Yeah, will do. Kevin, yeah, well, before we let you go, because you've always been a brilliant supporter of us, I've always wanted to know if you had to choose one Westlife song that you pick as the favorite. Now, I mean, Fool again, if I let you go, my love, yeah. swear it again. All the big ones. If you had to only ever hear one Westlake track ever again. What would Kevin Hughes pick? Hit me with the real thing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what? <laughs> I love that. I love it so much. But I, uh, but Wings for me as well. I'll always go back to Wings. Always, always. Yeah. So yeah. Sure. Uh, sure. You can sure. Do, hit me with the real thing as well. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're okay with that answer. You put me on the spot, Nikki. I like it. That was good. That was good. Yeah, well, you know what? It, I, it, I, it's a such a me. random album track. Like, it, 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 it surprised me, but it is a tune. It's yeah. a tune. It takes me back to sing you at Croak for your 10th, so that's why. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. That was the opening song, yeah, with the glasses and everything. Yeah. What? <laughs> Okay, you can do the whole song now, Shay. No, I know you've got to go. <laughs> it's, uh, it's too early, it's too early. <laughs> Don't I know it. Listen, Nikki, Shane, good luck with the new single. The new album is coming on the tour in 2022. Thanks for being on Hot 90s. I'm going to play Flying Without Wings right now. Shane, are you going to introduce it, Nikki? Go, for it. go on. Yeah. Okay, taking you right back to 1999. Uh, the song that probably will always be uh, something that will define Westlake. This is called Flying Without Wings on Heart 90s. That's how it's done. <laughs> This is hard.